What is up? So today we're here at Aerie here in Burbank and they're going to be showing me the Aerie Trinity system which is their state of the art stabilization system. It's like a steady cam plus a gimbal. Just everything that's stable, it's in there. And to show us how it's done, we have legendary camera op and steady cam operator Ari Robbins. Ari was one of the first to get his hands on the Trinity and he's already used it to shoot a handful of projects, one of which is Spike Lee's upcoming film, The Five Bloods. It's pretty Hold funny up. that you have an Airy Trinity and you shoot with Aries all the time. It's perfect, it's, <laughs> it's, it's a little fun. The first time I ever saw you was doing this right here. Oh yeah. I mean, that was one of those films where it's such fascinating motion and movement that I think a lot of people didn't realize it was like a practical thing that we did. Right. And so when I released them and you know, they said, oh wait, hold on. Then they realized that a lot of people were so blown away that I think it kind of helped promote the movie. Like, it hey, definitely look did. What we did. My favorite part of all of this is it's with one hand. I noticed that. Why, why are you just one so, hand is that? If you're holding both the rig, you're now using the rest of your body to stabilize yourself to the platform. Mm. I'm nullifying the movement that the crane's doing to my body. And that to me limited the amount of physical error. It just looks so effortless because you're only because using you're just your like right casual, arm. Like, all right guys, just like, take me up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this one's another one that I remember seeing. There's actually a slight tilt going up to find Ryan and that was the hardest part. All I had to do is just do this, right? But the tilt was the thing that's like, you had to then measure your body and it had to be the perfect amount of leverage to lift it just enough and then opposite on the way down. I could see how that could get really complicated because you also have to land it right there. You can't right there. land it and then and just then go adjust. like, oh, let me adjust a little bit. And you yeah. want it to be consistent, which I imagine they may have helped a little in post, of course, but like he rises at one point, so your tilt becomes higher through one of them. The first time I ever shot an action sequence that was all choreographed, I was kind of underprepared. I almost didn't realize how much choreography there is as me as a oh, camera a operator. Unit. And I think why La La Land was such an extraordinary thing is because it, it, it took the approach of realizing the camera was another character in the scene. And that's actually how Damien introduced me. Like when I met Em and Ryan, he was like, this is Ari, he's gonna be the other actor in these scenes. And oh that really? thought and that thinking as a camera is that, yeah, you're as much a part of it. You need to know when the character's gonna look sideways, when they're gonna say that line, when that character, I mean, every part of it, you're just as involved in that process, except you're the one who's completely invisible. Did, did you ever see the, the Justin Timberlake Say Something video? We did seven takes, but we had all these people working together and it's a fantastic one. So we go into like, like 300 there, he comes in, I go downstairs out of 300, then I actually have to track down another stairs at 300 mm -hmm. as we're zooming out. So we find that right there, come through, come down a stairs while we're tilting. So now I'm doing that staircase backwards half a track. As we land that, you trigger the zoom, start coming in to get to a Zolly where we land and find it. <laughs> oh my there. God. Most important question, is Justin Timberlake a d no, not at all. He was super sweet. My, my girlfriend's gonna watch this, and if she oh, knows no, no, that she he's really to... nice, if then she's gonna be more in love with him. I don't need no, that. No, no, so no. Look at the camera, just be like, oh, he's the worst. Oh, wait, I don't want to say it. He's so sweet. Justin Timberlake's the worst. We're, we're, oh, he's got it. No, no, no. He's the best. No, censor. You want to show me your airy trinity? Yeah, let's, let's do it. Let's some toys. Let's let's... So this is your personal trinity. This is mine. So this is kind of like a gimbal plus a steady cam, huh? Yeah. This is kind of like the evolution of it. Someone told me it was steady cam 2.0. Is the basic principle of balancing it similar to a oh, steady cam? Yeah. Pretty much the same thing for the most part, except you just now have a few more additions. For steady cam, you're balancing for it to be up here. For this one, you have to balance it to be up here and down here at the same time. This is what happens when you make jokes to friends and they take you up on it. <laughs> this is the airy vest. It is a very lightweight vest. This thing feels like nothing on my body and I quite like that. So is this a universal fit? Socket blocks the place where the arm connects to the vest are almost 100% consistent, but it gives you a lot of room. Like I feel like I have as much room as I would in any other vest to be able to adjust and move. It's very nice, it's, it's efficient. It also looks cool because it all matches. <laughs> and matching is important. Um, Absolutely, like this stand right here. Uh, it's just like all this and just hot well, pink stand. All, I wish I brought all my <laughs> other, all of my gear is becoming hot pink. It's You're the only guy that can pull this off, you know that. <laughs> I, I learned it from the coolest key grip I've ever met. Like older guy, blonde hair, came in in sandals, real rough cool guy and all of his gear was pink and I was like this guy's <laughs> awesome. So I guess I kind of borrowing it from him but uh, this is a Tiffin arm so it's a slightly wider diameter. Uh -huh. So I'm using this adapter to create that. Gotcha. So that it's a okay. thinner pin to here. 
first time I ever put on a vest like that, I got a bloody lip. As soon as I put on yeah. the arm, it just Yeah. I learned my lesson very quick to always hold that arm. You know, they used to say there was a lot of guys who had like were missing their front teeth or something like that. And like <laughs> the first like the OG operators. Uh-huh. Because they've hit themselves not thinking, you know, not learning, like, oh that could happen. I was just playing around with someone on set and I've become so aware of where this is that what we were doing is I was like, touch the arm in certain places. I'll close my eyes and I can tell you where you're touching. Because eventually this becomes as sensitive to you as your own arm. Like it's I almost like, yeah, feel. you have your third arm coming oh, yeah. out the side of your hip. And then once you're set, I mean, it's all pretty easy. Wow. Like once you get going, like I have become over in time, I've realized that steady cam is a two-handed tool unless you get bored and then it's a one-handed tool. <laughs> you should be able to understand the sensitivity of everything. You need to know what this arm is going to be able to do to push yourself forward just as much as you need to know that this hand will. And the reality is, is that none of them are important. It's all how you move. Learn this thing so that you can use it any way you want. It's really hitting me now uh, how much more flexibility this gives you and now just seeing how easy it is to go from, you know, starting underneath the table and then whipping over to here and then kind of making its way. I could see how many directors would see that and be like, okay, now I have a million ideas. Yes, now I can go where I wanna go and I don't have to be limited. I keep hearing that Steadicam operators, they have a lot of pain in their back. It's preventative and a lot of that is stretching, yoga, massaging, you know. But let's say we're in a limited physical space and that's where we need to push into. Uh huh. I can get all the way into a close up into Jeff from there. So I don't need to be in high or low mode. I'm just in, as I like to like call it, javelin mode. <laughs> because now that's my thing. Or I could be higher and looking down. Maybe I'm a, I'm a principal and he's a kid and he's in trouble. All right, I should be higher. Or maybe I push in and he's about to have a big moment. All right, I can be lower. But the javelin mode is what makes this thing very, very special. And here's the fun thing. We haven't, we're not even exploring how big we could make this. If we wanted to right now, we could make this thing eight feet long. We could do a crane shot. Like I could start this low and go over that wall. It's no problem. One of my friends did a shot where he started on feet and he went up to a basket for a dunk. Wow, That's with how, one of these? With one of these. But this also comes with another invention. A lot of us will get stuck in this move where you're running this way. And because I have comfort and trust in these tools and my pieces, I don't have to think about anything behind me. I can look forward and operate back with the same ease as I am walking forward. Usually I've noticed the monitors for steady cams down here, right? Yep. But now it's right here by the handle. Yeah. Which is something to get used to because you're looking at it closer and you're gonna have to deal with the fact that these things move, but that doesn't mean the image is. So sometimes it's a little like, wait, everything's shaking. Oh wait, no, that's the actual monitor. <laughs> right. And a lot of positions you'll see steady cam guys, there's a lot of this, like craning around to be able to see their monitor. Yeah. Those days are gone. Yeah. Other fun thing is that, and this is why it's very cool to have the wheels as an option, is I don't have to look at the monitor anymore. So what's very nice about this is you have your DP operating your tilt. So when you're coming in and doing a shot, if he just wants a little bit more headroom, he just gets a little uh -huh. headroom. I know I've got to put that lens right between those two cups. I know that that's where it needs to go, and I know someone back there can make sure it's adjusted perfectly. Wow. This gives the opportunity for both you and your cinematographer, you and your director, to work cohesively together. And because the Trinity is a pretty complex thing, there are times where it would be nice to have that adjustment, just a little bit of help. And I know it sounds crazy, but I did one shot where I went full speed into the car window, and it was old 50s car, so the window's this big, and we measured, it was one and a half inches, so you had about a three-fourths an inch on this side, and a three-fourth of an inch on this side to no stick it through. Kidding. I didn't look at the monitor once. I didn't return my eye back to the monitor until it was like about to hit the actor in the face. <laughs> but all I had to do was know that if I just get it through that window, it's okay. I just love the thing. There's so much cool shit you can do. I do this when I'm playing around. I try to think of just like places I can go. You have to learn the space. And that's some of the practice is starting to dodge things because you used to never have to worry about this hitting someone in the back of the head when you're running. Now you do. <laughs> it's one of those things that seems so crazy and complex until you start breaking it down and go, oh, wait a minute, this is just another tool and how do I use it? I'm actually impressed at how simplified it actually is. I thought there would be many, many pieces, especially with my past experience with just gimbals in general. It's just like, oh, okay, it's gonna be a complicated thing. This is a complicated thing with another complicated thing. Yes. But it's actually, I feel like it's been really well simplified. That comes from Aries' understanding of how tools should work. They shouldn't come to set with, 
a million pieces and a million parts and a big like, good luck. And the system that they've set up, it's so quick and easy. If I were to change a lens right now to a small little prime lens, this thing has like an, I think they say it's like eight to 12 pound adjustment range, which means once you've calibrated this and set it up, you basically never have to do it again. I mean, unless you change the entire thing, it's, it's already done. So you could go from one lens to another, add a matte box, add not, and all you have to do is it just this, just the front and back. They've understood what we go through. They understand what we have to deal with on set. And so they figured what can bring this thing to life and make it do what it, what it is intended to do, but not make people nuts in getting there. Now, when you're operating this, what exactly are you controlling? The pan is locked into this, right? So when you're operating, you're panning as you go, you're, you're doing all the adjustments. The only variation from a, like a standard camera stabilizer is that tilt is now being operated by motor. So you have a little thumbstick here, which I've done a little modification. You took that knob off of PlayStation and mm -hmm. stuck it on there? So I, I, well, I actually, I had to do two because I broke the first one. So I took one out, I cut it, I shaved it down. I set it just enough so that it wouldn't minimize like where you, like your full speed. When you were transitioning from a traditional Steadicam onto this, was there a big, learning curve was there a lot to readjust yes there is definitely an adjustment time the big difference is is your body i've spent so many years operating the same way like this is how you physically do it this is how it works and then this thing comes in and goes you don't have to think that way anymore and you're like what? <laughs> how do i look do i look pretty cool you look like a superhero. Third arm man. Third arm man. <laughs> what I learned is you do like the bow. You bow. Yeah, you always bow to the side. Huh. You uh, show respect. Yeah. Let's and then you up. insert. Yeah, this was that easy. <laughs> show respect and then stab. Here, I got the weight. I got the weight. So once you're in there, your right hand's gonna go here. Your left hand's gonna grab the uh, handle bar, if you will. And it's just, without bending your knees, just take a one step forward. You're gonna feel oh, it one, locked one in. Step oh, yeah. yeah, you You're see locked. how that does? And oh, then yeah. this is, can move around, so you don't have to worry. So it's just you step okay, up and so then pull. Okay, so let's just go up. Yep. And I just walk, oh my step God. Mappers. Immediately, I'm like, oh, this shot is totally unusable because I'm feeling like, oh, it's not straight, but the gimbal's doing all that work. So yeah. that is kind of like a mental shift a little exactly. bit, huh? Like, I've actually never used the Steadicam that isn't bottom heavy. Yeah. So this thing likes to drift a little bit, but it's fine to let it do that, That's huh? That's okay. Because it's, and this would have been- So you're still level, you're still good. Yeah. So you have that control. Because mentally I'm like, oh, this shot won't work. Because it's of, all the roll, yeah. but this, you have a lot more you have room about, for air, huh? Uh, I, what I've found is from about here to here, you have about a two and a half foot, three foot slide move before you have to move your body. So I would be in low mode and I'd tilt up with this thumb, yep. right? Yeah, which you can rock it hard. Like you can go quick on it, you can go gentle. And you just you just have to get used to it, huh? So your walk, as you were just doing, is like kind of how you start walking with steady kick. Don't think you're walking with the steady cam at all. Walk as normal and natural and put that thing wherever it wants. Wait, so I don't need to do the, the, whole, walk, the whole. No, like, so when you go to javelin position uh -huh. and you hold it like that and uh -huh. now you just walk forward, how much more comfortable of a walk that is. I mean, it's like, oh, I'm yeah. just going for a walk. It's, Your yeah. computer's doing a lot more than I'm used to, so it's like, it makes it a little easier in a way, it, huh? It makes it easier to focus on what's important. Here, whip pan to me, or whip pan to them and right back. Don't even have to use your body. Oh, that's right, you just kind of twist it. Uh -huh. And just, wow. Well, that was awesome. Now, I posted on Instagram, and I just asked for some questions that uh -oh. people have for you. Not a question, just tell them he's really cool. La La Land is super great. Cool, thanks. Hey, thanks, Matthew. Thank <laughs> how often do you pull focus in the wrong direction? Or how often do you mess up a take? Well, uh, you don't really pull focus. Well, I don't, right? yeah, I don't really deal with focus, but... But mess up a take? Uh, mess up a take? I mean, it happens, yeah. yeah. I mean, my mentor once told me, he said, you get two takes. If you f up more than two, you're probably gonna get replaced. And I like to use it as a rule of thumb. <laughs> That's you hard. should an error twice. If you hit your like hit a wall or a thing or something, maybe one more time after that, don't do it again. That's kind of a general rule of thumb. You get two takes before they get nervous. And when it comes to pulling focus in the wrong direction, that's uh, the first thing. Yeah, that's the first thing. Let's I would see, say, let's see. We, got, we, have, we can ask them. How often do you pull focus in the wrong direction? I never pull focus in the wrong direction. <laughs> that would be a really <laughs> bad mistake to do. <laughs> nah, I'm kidding. But yeah. maybe, maybe in early on it happened every once in a while, but that's one of those things the first day see. That's your most important job, you know? You kind of have to figure out which direction you're going before you press roll. <laughs> <laughs> do you have a diploma for this? No. I mean, I guess technically I have a little piece of paper that makes me feel better, but um, no. Like, you take a workshop and they give you a certificate. The only satisfaction is hopefully your mom's like, good job, son, and you're like, yay! Although you ain't, get, you ain't get nothing. What's the level of collaboration between uh, director of photography and camera op? 
I feel like collaboration has to come from a point of what are you trying to do? Are you trying to assist and create something for speed, for look, efficiency, safety? There's a lot of different things. So I'd say I feel like I collaborate, but I don't ever make the decision because to me, the decision is about doing what's best for all, and that's for them to tell me what they need. Since you're a bit of a lens nerd, this would be a good one. What is your favorite lens? Do you prefer vintage Ooh. or modern lenses? Ooh, that's a hard question. This sounds question. like a big depends, Man. but do you have anything that has been particularly kind of on the top of your brain lately? What I will say is that in order to have a favorite lens, you must know what every lens does. And one of the things, a very powerful thing a Steadicam or a camera operator, anybody can do, is know the expression of the lens you're using. How do you get to be a camera operator in Hollywood? This is a pretty popular question because a, a lot of people question. do see that barrier of how do you get yeah. into the industry? If I were to start over again, I would say search, 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 search. We now live in a time where there's so many outlets and channels. Don't go to the guy who says for $100, I'll get you in, kid. Like, don't listen to that. <laughs> what I think is use your resources. You don't have to live in LA. You can live anywhere in the world. And this is what I, I always think is if you put your time and energy, to, if you really want to be a camera operator in Hollywood, you will if you choose to. After that, nothing is too big or small to accomplish, whatever job. One last question. Sure. What's that? Uh, is that how many cameras you've burned? When I was 24 years old, I had been operating for about three years. Yeah. So this is at a time when you were a DP, you were trained, you had been doing it a long time. I would go to work with people who had kids my age. And at three years, I wasn't very good. I didn't know what I was doing entirely, but I knew I belonged there. I knew that I was coming in to work for $200 with my old beat up rig, and I could do what they needed. And I wasn't gonna take shit. I got these out of the idea of accountability and honesty, because I figured as soon as we shake hands, here's the proof. I have had problems. I've faced them, I've dealt with them, and I know the difference. And what I found is that everybody who didn't like these, we never worked together again, and they never really worked again. But all the people who love them tend to have moved forward, and we tend to still stay up. So it was just accountability. It was just taking it serious. And this one is a gal who almost got injured, and she never knew what happened because she was acting and I was doing the camera stuff, but it was a choice I had to make, which was either take a 435 to the face and crumble to myself, or fall into her and maybe paralyze her. And that's what I mean is responsibility and seriousness. I took it to the face. Communication and safety is everything. You know, I told the director and AD and the DP, everything should be fine. As long as we don't do this, we're gonna be safe. If we do this, it's unsafe. Okay, no problem. The first thing they did is they walked right over to the actors and told them to do exactly what I said would have been unsafe. And I didn't know, because I'm going to get set up to start the first take. So sure enough, take one, we start going. And I'm full speed running. With massive camera we get to that one point and what do they do they stop and i was like that's the one place if you stop i can't control it so once they stopped i had a nanosecond i mean a moment to just go oh my god and the second i did like realize that they stopped i literally just went almost mid-air and just went right to the ground and took the camera like that and it smacked me right in the head i was all bruised up and we're not talking about hitting like a football player we're talking about hitting a young actress in the center of her spine it was that close. So that's why I got them. Reminders. See, if I were to do that, my arm would just be like, I look like a Dalmatian. That'd be great. <laughs> That'd be good. Then you, people would know, be like, he knows what he's doing. It's okay. <laughs> Except for every time they see me, there'll be like a few more. See, that was so the... then they'll be like, okay, wait a second. It was awesome chatting yeah, and getting to know you. Till yeah. next time. Please, guys. See ya.